The world of theater is full of stars. But just like in the night sky, sometimes we don't see them all. Some are in the wings, some are maybe up over us in the catwalk. Hopefully they're not under the stage, but um, you never know. In this series, we are going to meet those hidden stars of the theater, hear their stories, and be inspired by them. So join me on this journey here in my state-of-the-art production studio in my backyard as we meet the hidden stars of theater. All right, everyone, welcome back to our bonus video of Miriam Michaels. And Miriam, I'm excited because um, you know, we've, we've talked to several people who've been spot ops and uh, nobody's really taken the time to explain to us what is, what does that look like? We know it's the spotlight operator, but there's more to it than that. Right. And I know when you and I spoke before, you even made the mention that, uh, being a spot op is something it's great for every stage manager to do at least once, because there's some skills there that make you a better stage manager perhaps. And there's some, some, uh, bleed over into what those are. So, uh, man, just take a few minutes here, if you would, and tell us a little more about that and share all kinds of cool stuff with us. I'm excited. It's all you. Spotlight's yeah. on you. <laughs> I'll take it. Um, so on a tour, there's the head spotlight operator that almost always travels with the tour. Um, and then they'll frequently hire local spotlight operators. Sometimes the tour will travel multiple spotlight operators, but frequently they'll hire locals. So what a spotlight operator does, they point this big fancy light at a person on stage, usually in a specific color or blurriness or size or how bright it is. Um, and all of those things are specified ahead of time by the designer. We don't usually make them up. For rock shows, they make them up. For rock shows, they just point them at people at full blast. Um, but uh, for a theater, it's typically very prescribed, like how the lighting cues are. Um, the lighting cues are you know, beautiful and artsy and you have this really low level, you don't want to blast in there with a spotlight because that'll destroy the cue. That'll totally wreck everything. You won't be able to see all those beautiful shadows and the nice colors and all of that stuff. Um, and so as a spotlight operator, you are the curator of that whole look. And you're given basically a big plot that says, I need the spotlights to come up here. I need this spotlight to come up here. Um, and you don't typically have to figure that out. That's usually the assistant lighting designer and the lighting designer who will confer about how to coordinate all of it um ahead of time and then they'll give you this big plot that says these are all the times that we want the spotlights to come on and so there's a lot of information that you need to tell these locals who have never seen the show before they never get a rehearsal and they have to perform the show perfectly on their first go because <laughs> tuesday nights opening nights are press nights so you uh, the first I never realized they don't get a rehearsal oh no they don't get rehearsal yeah yeah, yeah. and neither do the dressers typically um wow. and they're doing those sometimes incredibly quick, quick changes. They'll get walked around the stage, but they don't necessarily get to practice and they don't get to practice with the actors basically ever. Um, so our spot ops are sitting there going, okay, I've got this big light in front of me and I don't know what I'm gonna do. And so as the head spotlight operator, you tell them everything. And this is why I think that stage managers should have some experience in this. And this translates back and forth between these two disciplines a lot because you're calling an entire show. You are telling them every cue to do and it's a lot more complicated than lights 10 go, sound three go, real cue B go. Um, because there's a lot more information that they need and they don't have a cue sheet typically. They'll frequently wow. just be sitting there with their light and you have to tell them everything that needs to happen. So there's a set of information and there's an order that I always give it in. Um, so the way that the light works, you can change the colors and they'll stay there. So you don't need to like hold a color in place. So I always get them in the color ahead of time. So I'm gonna put you in frame two, that's color frame two then I'm gonna put you in a size because you can frequently adjust the size and it'll stay there with the light off, basically. Okay. Um, so those are the two things I try to give ahead of time before the standby. Then you kind of time it out, figure out when the appropriate time is in the script. Sometimes you don't even have a script, but figure out when in the language is the right time to say the words. And then you need to give where they're gonna pick somebody up. So spot one, where's your person gonna be? Um, then you, they can point the, the light at the right place. Then they're trying. Then they're looking for who they're going to pick up. So you want to say, the redhead, the guy in the blue hat, the blue suit, um, box costumes, something that's quick and easy to say and is very descriptive physically. If you say right. pick up Bob, they probably don't know who Bob is yet. Uh -huh. The first time they've seen the show, they know who Bob is. You can call him Bob. But the first night, you are calling him blue suit, <laughs> for whatever he's wearing. Um, the next piece of information that you need to give is uh, what they're doing. So are they coming up on them? Are they picking them up, pulling the light up on the, those people? And then how far are they pulling that up? Are they going all the way to full? 
Are they going to 50%? It's dimmer. Or are they just go glowing on them a little bit to bring a little bit of shine into their face? The next piece of information they need is how fast they're going to do that. So are they going to come up to 100 on a zero count? Or are they going to slowly sneak up to 50 or you don't really notice it? Um, and so that's all the pieces of information they need for the standby. So now they've, they've heard all this information. It's all in their brain. And ideally, less than 30 seconds later, you're going to tell them when they're going to do it. Um, and that's going to be a spot one go so that you can line it up precisely with whenever the stage manager's calls are. And the spot ups are not listening to the stage manager. They don't hear anybody else. They're just listening to the head spot up so that there's not other chatter going on in their headset. Does the head, does the head spot up listen to the stage manager? Head spot up listens to the stage manager. And so yeah. they, they'll hear the lights 12 and then you try to line up your goes, <laughs> right. um, which is which is a fun fun challenge, <laughs> lining up those oh. blackouts to get there. Because you know the stage manager is calling the blackout just ahead of time so that they can wait for the button push. The spot op is calling it basically about the same time because I say go and then everybody pulls their lever over. You know what I mean? Right. When yep. It's not go, it's go. Right. Um, they have to hear the word and then they're going to react. You don't want them anticipating. You don't want them anticipating. No, 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 no. Everybody's uh -huh. right on my words. <laughs> um, uh -huh. them otherwise, unless I say picking up on their entrance, fade out on their exit, they are going on my words. Um, so I'm gonna give you a little example of how I would say a couple cues for White Christmas. I'm gonna kind of fudge the timing out of, a, of it a little bit because we don't actually have anybody talking or singing in here. Um, but we're gonna do the top of the show into the first number um, and we'll see how I do. <laughs> uh, nice. uh, also, if, you know, it's, it's all out of context, but these are basically the words that I would say. So you get a sense of it. Oh, and the other thing is that because the words that I'm saying are to the other spot ops, but know that I also have a spot. I'm also running something and I have both of my hands on this machine and I'm not turning pages because both of my hands, one of my hands is holding the, the uh, size and um, the intensity of how bright it is. And the other hand is pointing the thing. So I'm not turning pages. I'm not looking at a script. <laughs> I'm running the spotlight on a person at a certain intensity. So it's kind of like, you know, the, the rubbing your belly and patting your head, but it's running the spotlight and saying a bunch of words. Um, yes, yeah, so that's, that's the, the other piece of the equation. So you're the brain for multiple people. Yes, exactly. Wow. <laughs> Farming out the brain. <laughs> um, and this is something that a lot of people don't get to see or shadow because spot booths are far away and hard to get to. Um, and so, and frequently they, they don't allow visitors or they're very small and cramped and hot and you don't want to have other people up there. They don't have an extra headset. Um, and so it's not something that a lot of people have seen. So I like to tell people about it so that they know what's going on in that cool. way far away, <laughs> million miles from the stage. Um, great, so I will give you the first couple of cues in White Christmas uh, and we'll see how I do. Uh -huh. So, alrighty, uh, top of the show, spots one and two are gonna be in frames one and six, one and six in a full body shot. Spot one, stand by downstage right to pick up the first guy in from downstage right. Spot two, stand by downstage right to pick up the second guy in, 50% on their entrance. So they're gonna pick it up on the entrance. I'm not gonna give them a go for that. Both spots stand by to iris down to half body. Spots iris go, spot two stand by to fade out. Spot two fade out, go. And I'm not saying timings here because prior to this I already said, hey guys, if I don't give you a timing, if it's not whatever I specifically say, it's a three count. So just don't worry about it. For some shows for rent, it's very specific. You have to give a timing for every single little cue. For this show, glad to say for the most part, it's just gonna be a three count. Next cue, spot two, stand by to pick up both guys downstage left at 50%. Spot two, go. Spots, this is a false exit, please do not fade out. Spots, stand by to fade out on their exits. Change to frame two only, frame two only in a full body. Spot one, stand by downstage right. Spot two, stand by downstage left to pick up the girls in the box costumes to 100% on their entrances. Spots one and two, go. Spot standby to fade out, then change to no color. Immediately reset center stage on the box that will be there. Spot one to pick up the stage left guy. Spot two to pick up the stage right guy. Spots fade out, go. Change to no color. Reset on the box at center. Spot one stage left guy. Spot two stage right guy. 100%, go. Spots try not to overlap each other during this song. And that's the first, first set of cues. <laughs> that is crazy. And, and you're doing that while you're operating your spot. Yes, yes. And some of this stuff is like, you know, halfway through, I'm giving the, the standby for them to pick up the girls in the box or the pick up the stage right guy and stage left guy. 
at the box at center, I have to bump up on the announcer who's giving the announcement and introducing the guys that they're about to pick up. So there's some there's some other stuff that's going on in there. Um, and those last the last couple that I gave were pretty much in time. Those ones are some very speedy cues. Uh, and uh, so there's a, there's a lot to think about there. And it's, uh, for stage managers, it's a similar thing. You know, you're trying to give the exact words that you need. You're saying them in a very clear way. You're saying the word go in an authoritative, firm manner that doesn't go up and doesn't go down. Uh -huh. um, you say go <laughs> or go. You don't want that either. You don't yeah. want the she goes. <laughs> uh, so I would imagine um, when you're on a tour, you probably have some situations where you get somebody who may not, uh, for whatever reason, maybe they're just under the weather, are not quite on their game that night. So you got you got a good story that you can leave us with? Yeah. Uh, at least one good one. There's got to be a million, I would imagine. Oh, buddy. Um, so my first year of White Christmas, um, one of our last stops, we were in San Francisco over Christmas. And the San Francisco local, Local 16, they're great. Um, I still keep in touch with the head electrician from there because he was really lovely to um, my deck electrician friend, Asia, and I. And um, I go up to the spot booth just bef like you know before house opens so i can talk to the guys and say things like if i don't give you a timing it's going to be a three count and right. you know we're on most of the show so like you'll be on your toes most of the time you won't fall asleep don't worry um and so i go up there and i meet the guys um i've got two spot ops one of them is kind of following along with everything and the other one seems a little bit confused but like i almost always give especially in these like low number locals the benefit of the doubt i'm like cool they run shows like this before, no big deal. And we start the show, and one of my guys is just not on it. He does, he's not really following instructions. He comes up at the wrong size, he comes up at the wrong intensity, he's not, he's not timing things well, he's getting the color swaps, he's doing them slow and wrong. And I'm like, what is this? And I I talked to him during a slower moment, and he's like, Oh, I like only ever run spots for rock concerts. I don't I don't really do this stuff. Oh. And I'm like, what? And I was like, dude, I either have time to run the show or I have time to teach you how to run a spotlight. I don't really have time to do both right now. There's a lot of words coming out of my mouth. <laughs> uh, um, uh, I bet that was a sinking feeling for both of you. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, probably said, hey, can, they said, probably called him and said, hey, could you do the show? Oh, yeah, I can do it. I do, I do spot yeah, all the time. Like, oh, yeah, li the Lion King's at the theater down the street. we got another thing going on in another venue. They, all, all six of our usual spot ops are off doing other gigs. So we just called the next guy in line. Um, who happened to not have run a, a spot for a theater show before. <laughs> think, like, he didn't realize he changed the size while the dowser was closed. And I was like, oh, buddy, you've got to change the size before you open the light. Change yeah. the size now, then open the light. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. So you just deal with it. You deal with it. And then, you know, when the stage manager comes on headset and says, Miriam, what on earth is going on? You say, I'm so sorry. We're figuring it out. <laughs> um, Absolutely. Well, that's great. Well, now we know. And I honestly, man, that uh, most of that is new to me. So I feel I feel much more educated now. That's good. That's good. And and much higher appreciation for those spot folks. Both of them. It's uh, it's doing the call, but even even listening to that, yeah. you know, it's the first time with no no practice, no rehearsal. Yeah. Is, you're gonna be on your toes. Crazy. Oh, very much so. And and especially in this show, like you're you're trying to see from 200 feet away which one's the blonde and which one's the redhead because they're wearing the same costume <laughs> yeah so how long into a show how many times do you have to do it before you can just almost call it in your sleep well ideally you've learned it during tech so right. cross fingers you were there for the tech process for rent i wasn't for rent i showed up halfway through the run and just had to shadow for a while and they gave me a video of the show they gave me the spot plot so i knew basically what i was supposed to be doing but i didn't have a good sense of the timing things like right. that um and so for this show i for white christmas i want to say it took me a couple weeks like probably like until i was doing it totally off book without looking at the spot plot i would say you know 25 35 performances so like not that long especially if you're going home and practicing the tricky bits um right. and then by like 40 or 50 shows in you could you know, you can call it through a hurricane. It doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And like my second year when I went back to pick up White Christmas, it all came right back. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Until they, they change one thing, which White Christmas, they're never going to change anything, right? I mean, that's a good traditional show. You got you to gotta stick with it, but yeah, there's, there's very good. 
No, not not big things. Um, <laughs> well, thank you, thank you once again for just uh, man educating us, which is good. It's good. It's good to learn things. So we appreciate you, and um, uh, thanks for being a star. Thank you. Thanks for having me again. Absolutely, absolutely, and thank you guys for coming back. We'll see you next time right here on the Hidden Stars of Theater. Bye bye. Thank you.